Hello everyone, now let us discuss mock questions from Anatomy of Digestive System Part 3. In the current session, we will be discussing the questions from mouth and oral cavity. Coming to the first question, which part of the body attaches the inner surface of each lip to corresponding gum? We know that we have two lips, superior and inferior lip. Each lip is attached to the gum with the help of Labial frenulum. Labial means related to lips. So labial frenulum. The inner surface of each lip is attached to its corresponding gum by a midline fold of mucous membrane. It is a fold of mucous membrane. This is the inferior labial frenulum that attaches the inferior lip to gum. And this one is the superior Labial frenulum that attaches the superior lip to the gum. Frenulum is a small bridle. Next question. What is the entrance to the oral cavity? Which part of the body is considered as entrance to the oral cavity? The answer is oral vestibule. Oral vestibule is the space between the cheeks, lips, gums and teeth. This part is the oral vestibule. The oral vestibule, vestibule is nothing but entrance to a canal. Oral vestibule is the entrance to the oral cavity. Oral vestibule of the oral cavity is the space that is bounded externally by cheeks and lips and internally by gums and teeth. So the answer is option A, oral vestibule. Coming to the next question, which part of the body separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity? As a whole, palate separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. Palate is again divided into two, hard palate and soft palate. It forms most of the roof. It is not root, it is F, roof of the mouth. And soft palate is muscular, hard palate is bony. So, palate is a wall or septum. Palate is a wall or septum that separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity and forms the roof of the mouth. So, which organ forms the roof of the mouth? Palate. And it makes it possible to chew and breathe at the same time. Palate is responsible for us to allow to chew and breathe at the same time. Coming to heart palate, this is the anterior portion of roof of the mouth. And it is formed by maxillae and palatine bones. Hard palate is formed by maxillae and palatine bones and is covered by a mu mucous membrane. It forms a bony partition between the oral and the nasal cavity. The next is the posterior portion of the palate is the soft palate. Soft palate forms the posterior portion of the roof of the mouth. It is an arch shaped muscular partition between the oropharynx and nasopharynx this is a arch shaped if you see arch shaped soft palate is arch shaped muscular partition between the oropharynx and nasopharynx that is lined by mucous membrane the next question is which part of the body prevents the swallowed foot from entering the nasal cavity the answer is option c uvula hanging free Hanging from the free border of the soft palate, we know that this is the soft palate and this one is the uvula. Soft palate is a finger-like muscular structure called as uvula, which is nothing but little grape. The meaning is little grape. During swallowing, the soft palate and uvula are drawn superiorly, closing off the nasopharynx and preventing the foods and liquids from entering into the nasal cavity. So, uvula is the body part that prevents the swallowed foot from entering the nasal cavity. Op correct option is option C. How many pairs of major salivary glands are present? There are three major salivary glands. Three pairs of major salivary glands. The option is C. And they are parotid gland, submandibular gland and sublingual gland. So, what are the Three major pairs of salivary glands, they are two parotid glands, two submandibular glands and two sublingual glands. So, total three pairs. The mumps which is caused by paramyovirus is characterized by 
what? Mumps is characterized by inflammation and enlargement of the parotid salivary glands. Mumps is characterized by inflammation and enlargement of the parotid salivary glands. So, the option is, correct option is option A. Mumps is characterized by inflammation and enlargement of parotid glands. Which part of the mouth forms the floor of the oral cavity? The roof is formed by palate, whereas the floor is formed by tongue. Tongue forms the floor of the mouth and it manipulates the food for chewing and swallowing, shapes the food and senses the taste. That is the function of the tongue. Tongue is an accessory digestive organ composed of skeletal muscle covered by mucous membrane. Together with its associated muscles, it forms the floor of the oral cavity. So, palate forms the roof, tongue forms the floor of the oral cavity. Which part of the mouth limits the movement of the tongue posteriorly? Here you can see the attachment. Lingual frenulum limits the movement of the tongue posteriorly. Lingual frenulum is a fold of mucous membrane in the midline of the undersurface of the tongue. And it is attached to the floor of the mouth and aids in limiting the movement of tongue posteriorly. And for example, if a person's lingual frenulum is abnormally short or rigid. If a person's lingual frenulum is abnormally short or rigid, it leads to a condition called as ankyloglossia. The person is said to be tongue-tied because of the resulting impairment to speech. It can be corrected surgically. If the lingual frenulum is abnormally short or rigid, it is called as ankyloglossia. And the person is called as tongue-tied because the movement of the tongue is not appropriate. So, which part of the mouth limits the movement of the tongue posteriorly? It is the lingual frenulum. This line you can find here. This is the lingual frenulum. Limits the movement of the tongue posteriorly. Which part of the mouth forms the lateral wall of the oral cavity? The lateral wall of the oral cavity is formed by cheeks. So, cheeks are the part of the mouth that form the lateral wall of the oral cavity. Here you can see cheeks form the lateral walls of the oral cavity. They are covered externally by skin and internally by a mucous membrane which consists of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and bucinator, bucinator muscles and connective tissue lie between the skin and mucous membrane of the cheeks. So, cheeks are composed of bucinator muscles. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.